All right, we are now joined by our race winner, Chase Elliott. Uh, Chase, before we go to questions, why don't you just start off by uh, running through your uh, all-star race win there for us. Yeah, just a, uh, you know, a super special night, um, a special event. You know, any, any race is hard to win, but, but this is a special race to win, uh, something that locks you in the all-star race for life, and, and that's, um, that, that's extremely special to join Dad and, and win in this race. It uh, means a lot to me as well. Um, just, just a big thanks to all our partners, Unifirst, uh, Napa Hooters, Kelly Blue Book, Mountain Dew, uh, Chevrolet, uh, all our partners that, that make this go around. They, um, you know, they've stood by us through some, you know, some, some not, so, uh, not so spectacular years. Uh, so we've had a rough couple weeks, and uh, we ruined Mr. Hendrick's birthday on Sunday by running uh, pathetic. Uh, so it was really nice to uh, slightly make up for that tonight. Awesome. We're going to go to questions. Uh, we'll start with Bob Pockris. Yeah, Chase, you had a really good car back in May at Bristol. I mean, was the car just as good tonight? Was it better? How would you kind of rate it? Uh, to be honest, I, I think it was a little bit better. I think we improved our car, at least for the short run. You know, the, the spring or the race a few weeks ago, I felt like was consisted of more long runs than it did short runs, but the short run came down to the very end, and I felt like that was our – that was our weak point in that event. Um, so we put a lot of emphasis, emphasis in trying to be better on the short run. And, and I think that um, I thought we hit it really well tonight. And on those on that last segment, are you kind of looking in your mirror and saying, when am I going to get bumped? When am I going to, when somebody going to try to wreck me for this thing? Yeah. I mean, for, you, you don't, uh, I think you have to expect that, you know, in, in any event, uh, you know, especially this one though, there's no points on the line or anything. Uh, but, you know, the, the goal is to get far enough away where they don't have that option. So it, uh, luckily it worked out that way tonight and got a good restart there at the end and was able to put together a good 15 laps to, uh, to seal the deal. Thank you. Next, we're going to go to Mark Garrow. Congratulations, Chase, uh, on the win. Um, you just alluded to a moment ago this being a big win. Just, just how big is it to you, and why is it so big to you? Well, I mean, this is, uh, you know, to me, this is one of those prestigious events that that the Cup Series only has, right? I mean, that this is this is a this is a special race on the schedule every year. There's a lot of hype around it, um, and the other thing about it is, you know, it's something you have to race your way into. Um, and luckily, we we raced our way into this deal for life now, so. Um, you know, that, that means a lot, you know, it, to me, it reminds me a lot of, you know, the, the clash or, or something at the beginning of the year in, in some ways, but I think this race is bigger than that because you're racing against the, the very best of, over, over recent times and in anybody's career, um, you know, to, that have locked themselves into this event. So, you know, to beat the best, I think is, uh, is always special. And this race, the, the only other time it was run away from Charlotte was Atlanta. Your dad won it. And now the, the second time <laughs> it's left Charlotte. So what does it mean to, to uh, have a victory in this race, just like your dad? Yeah, you know, I didn't know that uh, until, or I, I knew that, but I, I didn't really put it together until Winston told me that there on the, on the front straightaway. So that, that's super cool, you know, to join. Uh, and then somebody told me upstairs a second ago that I think the only other family uh, duo to win, to, to win the all-star race were, were the Earnhardts. Um, you know, so anytime you can, you can join them and anything racing is very special. So to join dad and, and winning this event, um, heck, I mean, that, that, that's, uh, that's not just special. I mean, that, that's, that's a lot, you know, a lot of years and a lot of history for everything to come full circle like that. It's pretty dang cool. Thank you. Next, we're going to go to Dustin Long. Yeah, Chase, um, Kevin Harvick was talking about uh, the challenges of the upper lane and just kind of how dirty it was and kind of raised the question about track prep. And I also know there was, I guess, some co concern about track prep uh, at Kentucky last week uh, from some. How concerned has it been the, the track prep the last two races? And is there a concern going into Texas where that can be a, a factor as well? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, the track prep was no different today than it has been the past two or three years we've been coming here. Uh, the difference was the length of the event was just not long enough for us to, you know, uh, get the grip strip up off the bottom to where the momentum around the top became the dominating factor. But, you know, look, at the end of the day, 
you know, by the end of a 500 lap race, the top is the place to be. And at the end of a hundred and some odd lap race, the bottom's the place to be. So, you know, there's still a place to be. So I'm not really sure that it matters. Thank you. Uh, next, we're going to go to Marty Smith. Chase, congratulations, brother. Uh, I'm curious, you said uh, in addressing the victory on television that there's no feeling like watching those fans lose their mind for you after you've been successful like you were tonight. What's the difference from your perspective, from the, from the athlete's perspective, of having that adulation at the end of an historic night for you versus what you guys have experienced without anyone there. What yeah, is that? Yeah, you know, to me tonight felt like an, an event again, and I feel like we've been, we've been missing that piece for, for a couple months. Um, and it just felt really good to get, to get NASCAR back. I mean, the NASCAR is built on the fans. And, uh, you know, once the race starts, it's hard to engage with them because you can't hear them. But, you know, before a race, the atmosphere was energetic again. I felt like the – I felt like the vibe was back and I felt like that, that fire and intensity in me was back uh, even more so than it, than it has been a piece that had been missing. And I think that's driven by the people, the cars pulling in the, um, you know, the pre-race parties and everything that you see. Um, and I actually went up in the stands. I snuck up there with my mask on and watched the, uh, I watched the open from the back straightaway. And, you know, I'm looking around up there and I'm seeing all these, uh, all these, you know, kids and families and, and people wearing their respective drivers and a lot of nine gear. And, and you just don't realize how much impact you have on people you've never met and you never will meet um, who, you know, genuinely want to see me do well. And they don't even know me, you know, and, and um, it's pretty dang cool to experience that. So I felt like I had a, a special night sitting up there with them, uh, watching that open from, you know, from the grandstands. Uh, really seeing and, and, and getting back uh, to, to the roots of, of what, you know, this sport's built on. And then to engage with them after the race, just to make, you know, to me, it made it mean that much more. Fantastic. Congratulations. I appreciate you. Thank you. Next, we're going to go to Jim Utter. Congrats, Chase. You also said after the race that um, you guys had struggled some. You've had some difficult races in the last several weeks. Uh, I just wondered, did you did you guys feel like uh, as a collective unit at Hendrick that you were missing something the last several weeks, or do you think it's more kind of a, just individual circumstances of the races? Uh, I mean, you know, a little bit of both. Uh, but we, you know, I felt like I was struggling. I wasn't, you know, doing a real good job, giving good feedback. And, and you know, to me, good feedback is, is you know, giving a direction – uh, on the car and coming in and doing that and going back out and being better. And my direction has not been pointing us in a better direction uh, and, and going faster these past couple of weeks. So I just felt like I needed to kind of hit the reset button a little bit and uh, not overthink things and just do what I think feels right. And, you know, that, that's a hard thing to do all the time, you know, and, and you try to get better and you try to learn. And uh, a lot of times you can, you know, take yourself down a road or this or that that uh, may not necessarily be benefiting you. Um, but we all want to improve. I certainly still have room for, you know, room for improvement. Tonight was uh, a great you know, a great night for us, but I, I still think I can do better, and there's areas that, that I can improve on. So uh, I'm going to keep working on that. And going back to, to Marty's question, uh, how can the – you must get an adrenaline rush off of a win like this compared to the one you had without fans. Is that, I know that's not really something tangible – but it must mean something going forward that you can take forward going for the rest of the season. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, what, what, you know, to me, there, there is no more electric uh, environment uh, that we as NASCAR drivers can interact with than here at Bristol. I mean, we don't go to, there's no other racetrack that's like this, that you're surrounded by the people watching um, all the way around the racetrack. So I don't think there's a better place to have people back for the first time than here. And, uh, you know, I know, it, you know, I know it was limited on how many people could come, but heck, it felt like, you know, they were sure were making a lot of noise for there to only be 30,000 people here. So that was pretty cool. Thank you very much. Next, we're going to go to Jacob Smith. You're muted. You're muted. 
Jacob, we'll come back to you in a little bit. Um, we're going to go to Davey Siegel. Hey, Chase. Um, what are you going to do with the money? That's a great question. Uh, Blaney was giving me a hard time about Mountain Dew earlier today, so I think I'm just going to send a truck to his house, and they're going to unload about 14 uh, pallets of Mountain Dew in his driveway this week and uh, see what he does with that. Thank you. Next, we're going to go to Andrew Curland. Uh, yeah, Chase. Uh, normally, we don't race mid-July at Bristol. Now, the night race is pretty close in terms of temperatures, but did you notice anything different in the car, you know, tonight racing mid-July than you would at Bristol normally during the season? Uh, to me, it felt like normal Bristol. I mean, this racetrack, I think, is really consistent um, from the standpoint of just the overall feel and, and, and what it's like. So, uh, I thought everything was, was really uh, very Bristol-esque. Thank you, Chase. Next, we're going to go to Zach Sterniola. Chase, congrats on this win. This being the first real marquee win for, of your career, you've touched already on the significance of, of what it means to win this event, but to have a marquee event on your resume now, um, what, what kind of importance does, does that mean for you? Well, it means a lot. You know, like, uh, you know, I think that's why the, the Coca-Cola 600 this year hurt so much. You know, the, the, those are – those are big events and, and, you know, this race is a big event, the 600, the Daytona 500, the Brickyard, uh, the Southern 500, all, all those races, uh, you know, are, are just ones that I feel like when you get done racing, you can look back and say that you uh, had, had won something like that, I think is, uh, is a special thing. So that, that's why um, all wins are hard. I haven't, I've never had an easy one. So um, I can't say that any of them are any harder or easier than others, but you know, uh, when I get done racing one day, um, to look back and say that we won the all-star race, I, I think will be a, be a special thing. The underglow on the cars, did it, uh, what, what did it look like from your perspective and, and did it change anything for you? Was it just weird to see out there? Uh, I didn't think it did much of anything, to be honest with you. It sure didn't right. do anything. It sure didn't do anything for me. Thanks, Chase. Chase, we're going to read you, um, Jacob Smith's question from Dawson County News. Jacob said, can you hear the sirens going off in Dawsonville tonight? What does it mean to you to bring this back to Dawsonville and the fans that have followed you your whole career? Yeah, it's amazing. I, I can't wait to get home. Uh, I know it's late. I don't, I don't know what time it is, but uh, probably not going to hear it tonight. But uh, hopefully somebody took a good video of it and I can see it. It's such a special tradition that, um, you know, Gordon there at the pool room has carried on for, for me and, uh, you know, after after doing it for my dad's career over, over the years. So, um, just proud that, that we were able to win and, and make it, uh, you know, make it happen. Awesome. Next, we're going to go to Daniel McFadden. Well, Chase, so how did you, how do you think the choose role played out today, tonight? How did it affect your race or the, just the race in general? Well, I think the choose rules, uh, been needed for a long time. You know, I, I think it should be that way every week. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think there's really a reason to, to not have it. Um, you know, that there's no reason to me why you shouldn't have the choice uh, or you should be, you know, automatically told where you're going to line up when one lane has an obvious advantage just based on where you come off pit road. I mean, to me, that's not – I mean, life isn't fair, I guess, but that's not uh, – it just makes way more sense to put it in our hands and – you know, you, it either works out for you or you doesn't. And, and if it doesn't work out, then it's your own fault, not, you know, not uh, the luck of the draw on where you come off pit road. Next, we're going to go to Jacob Seelman. There we go. Sorry, I was trying to toggle the end. Uh, Chase, you jumped out front there towards the final two stages and pretty much once you took control of that race, uh, never gave it up again. How important, you know, get was getting out front and getting clean air? I know a lot of people were kind of hoping for that dramatic moment, but it felt a little bit like uh, how important it is on the on the intermediate tracks, like when this race was at Charlotte, especially in that last stage. Uh, well, I mean, luckily we, you know, we were able to pass up through there. Uh, you know, I think we had a really good universe Camaro and, and we were able to make some passes there at the beginning of the race. I just think our, our you know, my, my team did a really good job of hitting the setup really well uh, for, for running the bottom. You know, I don't know how it would have been if I'd ever had to move up, but, um, 
yeah, I just think uh, the way it played out, you know, we were we were faster around the bottom and we were able to get out front and control the race. And, you know, that that's nothing new. I mean, when, you know, somebody has a fast car and they get out front, um, you know, it typically looks like that, I feel like. So I was just glad it was us this time. Thank you. And we're going to wrap up, wrap up with Cole Kusimano. Hey, Chase, congrats. Um, how much of tonight's race can you apply to the playoff race um, in the fall? Or was it maybe too small of a sample size to uh, tell? No, I, I mean, I think Bristol's Bristol, like I said a minute ago. So uh, we'll for sure think about what we had here a few weeks ago, what we had tonight, and try to be better when we come back. Thank you, sir. You bet. Thank well, you, guys. Congratulations, and thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. Have a good night.